Hey guys, my name is Shai. This is a timeless starseed reading. And I think I can sum up this whole spread <laughs> in a single sentence. So you are feeling afraid of showing the world who you really are and especially how powerful you really are. That, that's it. You're going to overcome this. Um, this is a pocket of energy you're working through and it does not last forever, but this is a really, really common theme for everybody right now. And that includes all of you who are watching this years down the line. It just means that we went, some of us went through this pocket of energy now, and some of us are going through this pocket of energy at some other nexus in space time, right? But I have been working through this myself. I am seeing so many people around me work through this. It's pretty crazy. So that's basically, <laughs> that's basically the whole, um, the gist of this. But of course, I'm going to dig into it with all of these cards because we have a lot going on here. And I think I'll actually start with our recent past because, you know, when I say you, I really mean all of us because this is applying to all of us. But in the recent past, we have this nine of crystals. So to me, this is lately, you have been getting activations and upgrades and you've been really, that's been helping you level up your confidence because you're starting to see uh, your manifestations coming through. You're starting to see your life get easier. You're starting to see your, like your spirituality or the evolution of your consciousness, all the inner work you've been doing, you've been seeing it starting to pay off. And it's not like your life is perfect by a long shot, but things are getting just a little easier lately. And you're starting to feel so much more comfortable in your power. You know, you're starting to notice, yeah, yes, you are psychic and you're starting to really believe in that and understand that you just need to unfold that. You're starting to notice all of the synchronicities around you and how magical everything and how everything is coming together, you know, in one great cosmic narrative or one great cosmic storyline. It's like kind of like a purpose, but I don't really mean purpose, but you can see how everything is connected and how everything is kind of working out. That's where you, you're coming from. And because of that, you're feeling so much more, <laughs> more strength, right? The center card here, our center energy is this strength card. This is how you're feeling as long as you are somewhere where you feel allowed, like where you feel your environment is giving you permission to feel it. You know, when you're at home, when you're surrounded with just your most intimate people, or when you're meditating or even in your dreams, you're, you, you feel this way deep down inside, but you know, this is being crossed by the nine of swords, right? <laughs> That's a crossing card that nobody really wants to get. Anxieties, sleepless nights, fears, I would even say terror and phobia. And also with the nine of swords, there's a certain element of you know psychic attacks, um, parasitic entities coming to get you. I don't know about you guys, but I've been having uh, dreams lately of remembering past lives where my planet was invaded and attacked. And I'm just having dream after dream after dream of being in prison and breaking out of prison and being chased and having to hide or finding out that like the like enemy fleet is coming and we, our planet is peaceful. So we have no defenses and we're just going to get overrun and having to flee and having to be a refugee and having to like all of those things um, over and over and over again. I think some of you are having those um, having those dreams as well. And one thing I just want to point out about that is when your past life experiences are coming through in your dreams, they don't always look like past life things. Like I mean, specifically in the images, your your brain, you know, it can be feeding you you can be remembering something about your past life, but you can be seeing it as if it's this life, you know. For example, your soul family, the people you've lived many, many lives with, you could be dreaming about them from a past life, but they look like they look they look like the way they look now, right? <laughs> Just because that's the easiest way for your brain to represent them to you in your dream, and also then you know who you're looking at, right? Uh, also just to give an example, you know, I've had dreams remembering um, when I was fleeing Lemuria, I had to get on a, a ship and, and flee and it was, you know, hurricanes and crazy weather and it was this long, long, whole long journey. And I remember that not as actual Lemurian ships. I remember that as modern day ships um, 
in, it, that's how it comes through in my dreams. So pay attention to your dreams. If you notice certain themes coming up, that's probably a past life, even if it doesn't look like a past life, even if it looks like this life and you might just think it's, um, you know, your brain putting this together and creating scenarios for you. It is likely to be a recreation of past life themes, you know, so that can uh, really give you some insight into your past lives. So that is part of this. But more to the point, we, we literally have our strength being crossed by our nightmares. Our strength is being thwarted or prevented. And I think part of this is, well, I think there's two things going on here. Part of it is just our own fears that we're working through. And the other part of it is actual entities trying to stop us from flourishing, trying to stop us from stepping into our power. You know, parasitic entities, all kinds of nefarious lower astral beings <laughs> um, coming to pester you. I keep having nightmares lately of, I mean, they're not really nightmares because I don't get that scared in my dream because I've had these kind of dreams for so long, I'm used to it now. And I, I had one nightmare, which uh, like about a year ago, which I'm not going to get into right now, but it, it was... And I wasn't really asleep for most of it. I was awake for most of it. And it was just this crazy experience of being attacked by a really terrifying entity. And I thought that that was it. Uh, but I had support come through and um, I was able to defend myself with uh, this, you know, higher dimensional support. And <laughs> ever since I lived through that, now I know why I had that experience because now um, lesser experiences of being attacked by any kind of lower astral beings. I got that. I, I'm good, right? <laughs> but anyway, I keep having dreams of, you know, parasites coming at me and trying to attack me. And sometimes they look like, you know, modern day soldiers. Sometimes they look like creepy worm people. It doesn't matter what they look like, right? They're after me. And I'm, I'm sure some of you are, or probably all of you are, are, are on some level having experiences like that. And you know, from my perspective, those experiences are real. When we sleep at night, when we're in our dreams, we're traveling, you know, those dreams are being constructed on the astral plane. And, you know, you're meeting with your friends and resolving past life issues with your soul family. But then, you know, it also opens up an opportunity for these, you know, unsavory entities to kind of come at you. But I don't want to be scaring anybody here. I know this can sound, you know, a little freaky, but what I really want you to remember is that you are so much more powerful than any of these beings that are coming at you. They're just, they're poor little lost pieces of consciousness that are not where they belong. They've gotten lost. They, they're they essentially, they're here in our universe and this is a hell world to them. This is a hell realm to them because it is so non-conducive to their life, to their way of living, to their well-being. And they've turned into these parasitic entities. So, you, you you can absolutely defend yourselves from them and you don't need to worry about them. And if you, uh, if you doubt, if you ever doubt your own ability to defend yourself from some of these beings, you just call on, call on higher support. You know, you're, you're, you are so ridiculously supported. And I recently had a dream where I was being attacked by one of these entities and all these beings, you know, my soul family and higher beings, they all came in and they're like, we got your back. Like, you know, we, we got this, like, we got you. You're so protected. And I knew that experience was to, was to really remind me how, how safe and protected I really am. You know, they can't, they can't get us. <laughs> they can scare us, right? They can scare us, but that's all they can do. They can't really get us. We're good. We're good. So I hope anybody who's, um, feeling a little nervous about that, uh, just, just, Tune into your own power, right? They're, they're literally trying to stop you from tuning, tapping into your power. That's why we want it. We need to get rid of this uh, fear. And I mean, it's coming up right now because we're purging it. That's what we're doing. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. And part of how we need to step into our own power is to actually give up the struggle, like give up the fight. Uh, not that we are giving in or succumbing to any kind of energy that we don't like. It's that we take ourselves 
out of the game. We don't need to play that game. It's exactly like, remember you're in elementary school and all the other kids are playing cops and robbers and you don't want to play cops and robbers because that game's dumb and it's just a bunch of kids running and chasing each other and you don't like it, <laughs> right? So you could stay in the game, you could stay on the, like the elementary school field and play cops and robbers and hate every minute of it, or you could leave. You could leave the field, you could leave the game. And some of the kids might tease you, some of the kids might make you feel bad for not playing, and they might try to get you to come back, they'll make you feel guilty or make you feel stupid or embarrass you or hassle you at lunch or something, but they can't make you go back. And once you stay out of the game for long enough, eventually they'll forget about you and leave you alone because you've removed yourself from their area of influence. It's exactly like that, right? We need to take ourselves out of this kind of embattled mindset because in our deep past here, seven of wands, this is, you know, fighting the battle. This is, you know, you've won a few battles but you're still in the war and now you've climbed to the top of the hill and now you're taking a breather, but you're kind of planning your next move, right? And you know that the enemy is coming up the hill. You know you have to fight again soon. So and that also plays into all those anxieties because you know that there's always another battle, always another battle, and you're kind of in that embattled mindset. But this is our like spiritual journey or our like the crowning position of this Celtic cross spread. The Five of Swords, which, you know, often is seen as a negative card but it's not really, I mean, especially this rendition of the card, right? Look at this. We have this being with these wings. Uh, these are the kind of wings These are that you see on artwork from ancient Egypt. I really associate with, with the Hathors. So this being is a Hathor and she's standing on a battlefield, but the battle is over. <laughs> All the swords are in the ground. It's kind of a moment of peace and quiet, right? Calm on the battlefield because everyone's uh, kind of had enough and they've stopped and they've put their weapons down or maybe the, maybe the battle is just done because everybody has killed each other except this being is, is here. She's here with her wings and she's coming to... The way she has her arms outstretched like this, her, her hands up, I feel like she's he coming here to help heal the wounded, but more than that, help coming to heal the lost souls, the souls that lost their lives here. And maybe they're, you know, I can almost imagine some spirits wandering around trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Are they dead? Do they, are they still in the war? Are they still fighting? What's going on? So to me, this card in this position right now is all about holding yourself apart from the battle, giving up understanding that you don't not that you do not need to participate in this fight anymore it's exactly like my metaphor with kids playing cops and robbers if you don't want to play the game you leave nobody can keep you in the game if you don't want to play the game and you know I, i've been hearing a lot of people lately really fixating on the whole war of good versus evil you know the war of light and dark the war between people who want to be free and the people who want to control us. I'm not denying any of that. I know entirely that that is all real. But <laughs> I have also been finding this is this has been a message coming strong for me for like six months, right? Um, I'm more confident than ever that we do not, you know, win the war by fighting the bad guys, right? We kind of neutralize the conflict by taking ourselves out of the conflict, right? And then just observing the conflict, do any grieving you need to do. Of course, you still have empathy and compassion for the people who are suffering, but if you can take yourself out of the conflict, observe the conflict and raise your frequency, if you can get to the point where, you're feel, where you feel good enough that you can focus on raising your frequency, that is how we neutralize this conflict. We don't have to fight the battle to win the war. We neutralize the whole problem by raising our frequency. And surprise, surprise, guys, that's what you came here to do. <laughs> so um, if you're feeling like really embattled right now and really kind of stuck in the fight, that's fine. You know, of course, you always need to be feeling your feelings and going through your processes and not advocating, you know, just skipping over that, but keep working through it and keep trying to zoom out your perspective so that you will eventually get to the point of being able to stand aside, stand away from the, the fight and all the conflict and just focus on raising your frequency. And if it helps, just think of all of your star families, right? <laughs> the ones in higher dimensions, 
they, you know, if you think about the ninth dimensional Arcturian council, they are, they live in a state of constant bliss. That's like almost all that they're capable of feeling. Um, and, but they're watching earth all the time and they're feeling into everything that's going on here, but feeling all of the pain and suffering that's happening on earth doesn't lower their frequency. They have compassion for us. They empathize with us and they can observe it all, but it doesn't bring them down. Right. And it would be no good for us if it did, if they allowed their frequency to get lowered because of their, of, because of them being in contact with us. Right. It serves, it helps us much more for them to keep a higher frequency. Same with all the other you know, benevolent star beings out there. Same with you, same with us, right? If we can <laughs> think if it's powerful for some collective in Arcturus or in the Pleiades or in Orion to like maintain a high frequency and beam that on Earth, how much more powerful is it for those of us who are literally walking the Earth right now to maintain a high frequency, you know, as much as we can, whenever we can. It's not like we need to live in that all the time, but if you can maintain that even for just 10 minutes a day or 10 seconds a day, you know, with the butterfly effect that ripples out and cascades and over the course of years and over the course of all of this space time, that ripples out to have a massive effect, right? If it is slowly affecting everybody and it snowballs up and that's how we raise the frequency. And that is how we, instead of thinking of fighting the battle to win the war, we just neutralize the conflict. Okay, so that was my tangent on kind of that external conflict problem. But really, I think the more central issue here is that we have all been feeling called to step up and to, it's like almost come out of the starseed closet. I don't know how many of you guys actually tell your friends and especially your family that you think you're an alien from a higher dimension. <laughs> right? You, you, I think most of us are in the closet, right? <laughs> so, uh, but we're feeling more and more called in order to spread the light, you know, in order to hold the light that we might need to at least talk about this kind of stuff more openly. Maybe not at fully admit to your boss that you're an alien from a higher dimension, but somehow start to just not have to hide who you are, right? You want to be able to be normal and, and talk about the things that interest you to the people around you, right? And more than that, we're getting called to step up into our, all of our varied missions. And I'm not like super into, you know, oh, you know, we came with one specific mission and we need to carry it out like good little soldiers. I do not resonate with that kind of idea of starseed missions at all. I think it's just besides the general purpose of we're here to help hold, hold higher frequencies and, you know, just to help people and to have fun and to do our own learning and to just have the experience all of that. It's also that our missions can, you know, flux and move and change, you know, for a while your mission might be to be a teacher, you know, then your mission is to like backpack around India, <laughs> right? It, it, it changes all the time. So we don't need to be judging what we feel like our purpose is. And we don't need to be um, like too fixated on one thing, but it's just, I know most of you lately have been feeling something, right? You, you want to learn Reiki or you want to practice your psychic skills or you want to put your music out there or you want to do some kind of project on social media. It's like there's there's things you're feeling called to do or some kind of career move and it involves putting yourself out there and it involves uh, stretching yourself out in a way that is uncomfortable. You have to step outside of your comfort zone and you're terrified of that, right? You're, you need, you're trying to step into your strength and to show your strengths to the world, but nine of swords, right? the fear is stopping you. Um, yeah, I'm struggling with this a lot because I have been learning to channel energy sessions and, you know, <laughs> I keep receiving these messages like, you know, you got to get up on YouTube and put your face on there and tell your starseed awakening story. And you need to like channel these energy sessions. And I'm kind of dragging my feet because all that's kind of terrifying. I feel like that's a lot, <laughs> but you know, I'm working through that. And I know I'm going to get there. Um, but, you know, in our near future, it's the Seven of Cups. And this is important, actually. Because, you know, part of having to step up and step forward and put yourself out there and navigate these different uh, career changes or spiritual changes or just lifestyle changes, whatever it is, whatever the shifts you're going through, you might, you know, you're feeling, what if I make a mistake? What if I make the wrong move? What if I, you know, should I do this or should I do that? How exactly do I navigate this? But this, this seven of swords, if you look, 
It's not like these are full of, you know, snakes and poison and wine and gold, right? They're all full of crystals. So the, in this deck, the seven of crystals is a reminder that you can't mess this up. You can't. And any of these options, if you have seven options in front of you, they're all good, right? Some of them might be more preferable or more enjoyable than others, and some of them might make you more money than others, but it's like small differences. And they're differences that don't have massive impacts. You know, at the, at the end of your life, you'll still have lived your life and your life journey will still make sense and you'll still have accomplished your purpose and you'll still will have enjoyed yourself more or less, right? So you don't need to actually worry too much about how to navigate this, right? Um, of course, keep working on like stepping up into your calling, I guess, but don't put too much pressure on yourself about it, right? You know, for me, I know that I'm going to put my my face on camera and tell my Starseed Awakening story, and I'm going to start um, channeling energy sessions. I'm going to do that. I know I am. It's inevitable. Um, but I'm being pretty easy on myself about when I do that and how I do it, right? I'll do it as soon as the inspiration really strikes me. As soon as the inspiration really strikes me, then I'll know it's the right moment. But I've been kind of stewing on it for a while. I think it's the same kind of thing with you guys. So just, you know, Go easy on yourself. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. This is all going to just kind of work out. And yeah, so your center self right now is the Queen of Cups. This is a beautiful energy to be embodying. This is coming into so much psychic ability. Really, the Queen of Cups is very intuitive, very psychic, very empathic. Right. And but it's also uh, moving into the flow. You know, she's holding a cup. This is water energy uh, and so feminine. She's like the most feminine of all of the queens. And her energy will help you make these shifts, you know, navigate these changes. The Queen of Cups doesn't worry about trying to pick pick one of these seven cups. Right. She just goes with the flow. Right. It's like like riding a kayak down the river, right? Even if there's rapids or a little waterfall, you know, you just go with it. <laughs> you got this. So with her though, don't try to make your decisions too much with your rational mind. I'm not one of those new agey people who, you know, preach never thinking. <laughs> um, I'm a very like left brain kind of person, believe it or not, despite the fact that I'm on the internet doing tarot readings about aliens, <laughs> yeah, you know, but, uh, but I am. And so I really had to learn to, you know, let go of my rational mind when it is not relevant. And I've had to learn to step into my intuition and my heart space when that is relevant. You know, there's a time and a place for both overall, they should be in harmony. So, but right now it's just for right now, you're really being called to make your, your decisions from your heart space and not so much worry about your rational mind, right? This is not really a time if you're trying to figure out where to move to or what job to take or how to like manage your business or make a career move. Don't make a list of pros and cons like, right? Don't don't crunch the numbers. That's all left brain rational mind stuff. And that's not for right now, right? Right now is for following your heart, follow your heart. <laughs> so and yeah, this is so much of this energy is feminine. All of the positive energy in this spread is feminine. So, you know, we're in a feminine moment, apparently. And Six of Cups, this is your environment. Um, this particular Six of Cups to me is all about remembering past lives. And like, look at her. And especially past lives that are kind of negative. Um, she's sitting here on the beach feeling pretty good, but she's looking back at this castle and it's kind of dark and stormy. Yeah. And for me, this fits in entirely with those dreams I've been having lately and the dreams I really think you guys have been having, whether you remember them or not. So that card to me is just coming through um, really as a reminder that a lot of the issues you're working through right now are coming through from your past lives. Because right now, I mean, all of 2020, I think this is a theme for the whole year. We're not just working on this life. We're creating a great big, like omnidimensional lattice work between the person you are right now and all of your or many of your other lives and in your dreams or just in issues that come up in your daily life you might think like what is this about it's from it's some issue from your past life like for me I, yeah you know i keep having dreams of my world being inv invaded and destroyed right um i could 
mistakenly for I really think this would be a mistake. I could interpret that to mean that, you know, I'm having prophetic dreams and I'm thinking that our world right now is going to be attacked and destroyed, but I don't think that's it at all. In fact, I think there is a lot of people of course, we're all worrying about what's happening in the world, right? Um, I think you guys less than most. <laughs> um, you guys, because you guys know that you actually came here for this and you came here to thrive through this shift, right? But so many people are worrying about what's going to happen and then people are having nightmares and people are, you know, bringing up phobias and they're thinking that what they're dreaming about or the visions that they're having are about the future when really the vast majority of those experiences, like having nightmares of your planet being attacked, they're actually from the past. <laughs> so... Yeah, this card is coming up to bring that up for you, to make you realize that you're not just living this life, you're connecting with all of these other lives and working through issues from there. So if you're having some kind of phobia that you're going to be put in prison, as just an example, right? I would say it is very improbable that you're going to go to prison in this life. What you're actually dealing with there is the experience of having been imprisoned in a past life, right? It's all, it's a past past energy. We need to wrap that shit up so that we can move on <laughs> all fresh and clean for the future. And hopes and fears. This is the moon. And if you haven't noticed, for me, this deck um, is not very much like the traditional tarot because these cards are so high frequency. Like, I mean, this is the star child tarot. This is the deck that literally woke me up. I, I got it. It landed on my doorstep on the full moon in Sagittarius in 2019. That's how I first found out about the word starseed and, you know, here I am. <laughs> so this deck is majorly significant to me, majorly important, and all of the cards I have developed really specific personal connections with. So this moon card, I do not see it at all as illusions. I don't see it as that kind of dark, nasty, murky, scary energy that we sometimes associate the moon card with. This card, this, look at this, this being here is channeling cosmic energy, di channeling divine cosmic energy. And I would go so far as to say the best way to describe this in English words is to say that she is channeling the goddess. You go if any of you have seen very many of my videos, I don't use the word god and goddess very often, but here I feel it's appropriate. You know, this being is channeling the goddess, <laughs> divine feminine energy, if you will. And that is what you are hoping for, and that is what you are afraid of. And isn't that adorable? You, you're the Queen of Cups, hoping and fearing the divine feminine energy. You are hoping you will learn to channel the goddess, but you're also afraid of it because you're afraid of your own strength and you're afraid of stepping out and having everything be too much for you. You're afraid it will be too much. And our outcome card here is the Five of Cups. And those of you who know tarot might be wincing at that. But again, I have a non-traditional interpretation for you because I have been through so much with this exact card. <laughs> okay, like this deck, I have a personal relationship with every single one of these cards. And this card, this Five of Cups, I mean, yes, it has that element of disappointment and kind of heartbreak, you know, but look at the picture here. It is literally the earth being sundered. It is like an earthquake has come along and ripped the earth apart. So there is a, the pain here comes from separation and it is very much an emotional heart-based pain. But with this card, it always comes up for heart healing. It's like, you know, you, I know I've probably talked about this many times before, but honestly, guys, I don't remember the readings that I do because when I'm doing readings, I'm channeling and that puts me in a slightly altered state. And most of the time I'm actually staying here with my eyes closed. You can't see that though, <laughs> but I don't remember how many other times I've talked about this. So forgive me if some of you might've heard me say this many times before because readings for me, it's like trying to remember what happened in a dream. I don't typically remember what I've said. So anyway, with this card, it is about heart healing. And you're thinking, well, how does like division or separation or rupture, how is that heart healing? To me, it's because I really perceive everybody, <laughs> basically all humans alive right now, we all have these clogged up heart chakras, right? They're just full of gunk, <laughs> full of gunk, and they've been blocked up. And we, we did that to ourselves to protect ourselves from pain because it's so polarized here and it's so painful here. The only way to survive that was to literally block up our heart chakra so that we could not feel that much pain. 
thinking about blocking up your heart chakra, sure, now you're not feeling pain, but you're also cutting yourself off from channeling the goddess, right? If your heart chakra is blocked out, you can't channel source anywhere near as effectively as you were. It's like your channel to source is clogged. It's like a dirty pipe. <laughs> um, so when this five of cups come up, comes up, something is going to, you know, break open the clog in your heart chakra. That can come with, you know, pain, crying, purging, any of that stuff. But we've all been through heart healing periods before and we'll get through this one as well. And in fact, I would say for you guys to be getting this strength card and to be getting the rest of this spread, you know, this is by far not your first rodeo of heart healing. So you've got this. Your heart has actually already been um, been recalibrated quite a few times and it is nowhere near as clogged as it used to be, right? You are been doing the work slowly to open yourself up to more source energy and one last, so we're coming up for one last round of heart healing. And that's super synchronous for me because I've been working through a series of a chakra clearings. And it took me like almost two months to get through the lower chakras because my lower chakra chakras are totally wrecked. Um, at least they were, they're in a little bit better shape now. But this week I'm going to start the heart chakra clearing. So now I know that that is <laughs> coming up for me. And here's the thing, once you go through that heart clearing, then you'll be able to channel the goddess. You'll be able to channel divine feminine energy. You'll be literally, if you imagine, you know, the umbilical cord or the beam of light that goes from source to you and it goes through your heart chakra. It goes through your heart, through your center, through the core of your being, right? That beam of light from source to you goes through your heart. And the more you clear that out, the more you will remember that you are source. You are a source energy being. You are an emanation of source consciousness. You are a child of God, however you want to put it. Those are all just English words that describe this. <laughs> you guys know what I mean, right? So clearing out that heart, heart clog, you know, that heart chakra clog, you'll be opening yourself up to more source energy and that will allow you to stand up in your power. And these stupid pesky fears, these terrors, this PTSD from your past lives, these traumas and any little pesky astral beings who are trying to bring you down and trying to scare you gone like that's it that'll be gone and then you'll be just left here standing in your power roaring like a lion and i think i'd like to end it there i know i usually pull oracle cards but i feel like that's it for today so sending you guys so much love and light thank you so much for tuning in and for being here for still being here despite everything and for doing your work. And I just feel like, I know I said this already, but just I'm gonna say it one more time. I feel like we feel that we're not making any difference. We feel like if we raise our frequency for a little bit in a day, we dance around the kitchen, we feel great, you know, we meditate, we, we find neutrality, we find our equanimity, whatever it is that we did in that day, we feel like it didn't make any difference. But the universe wants us to know that it makes a huge difference. And just remember, it's the butterfly effect. Blah, blah, sorry, <laughs> butterfly effect. You guys know what I mean, right? A small change cascades out to having a massive effect. So every time you make a small change in your frequency, every time you raise your frequency just a little bit for just a little while, sure, you might not see anything happen that day. You might not see any evidence of that happening. But over the long term, it's massive, massive, massive. So never feel like you're not having an effect. Never feel like you're not doing anything. Never feel like you're, never feel like being here is pointless because you are doing so much. You are having way more of an effect and you are serving such a purpose and you just, you have no idea. You have no way of knowing, right? So yeah, I, and that's the end of your messages. I can feel it <laughs> closing off. So just, I love you guys. Um, I'll talk to you later. Bye.